Hey there, this is Jacob from RC, here today to show you how to build an SLM with the RC SLM adaptation system. An SLM is a small, specialized, and secure language model. And the best part about the SLM adaptation system that we produce at RC is that it lives entirely within your own cloud, so your data never leaves. And this means that you can build deep, proprietary language models with your proprietary text data using state-of-the-art techniques and within a secure system. So what is an SLM exactly? So an SLM is trained to understand context of your data. There's various techniques that we use to do this, which I'll dive in later, but let's go ahead and take a look at what a model inference looks like. So here I have an SLM that's been trained on US patents. So it draws from the US patent database back through 2021. And here I'm asking it a question about EE prom circuits. So what it does is it fetches relevant information and then it passes that to a generator that's already been trained to adapt to understand that context both from a continuous pre-training perspective and through a retrieval perspective. And so here you can see that it's taking the information of the US patents that it's reading and it's synthesizing a response. So now let's go ahead and dive in and see exactly how these models are made. So uh, in order to deploy the RC platform, you need to deploy it in uh, your virtual private cloud. So for example, I have one running here this uh, RC platform is running in my sandbox in AWS. Uh, it's entirely contained within the resources within my AWS account. You can hear, see here some of the resources that it's running on. It's running on open search serverless and AWS batch and ECS. And it's using a lot of services to orchestrate the different pieces that are involved in retraining an SLM. A lot of these uh, resources are quite difficult to construct, but that is what we've done here at RC is provided infrastructure for you to be able to train your own SLM models. So exactly what are these resources that uh, you're using to train the SLM models? So this is a diagram of our SLM ad adaptation system. Here you can see that we run a pre-training routine uh, off the open source generator. So here we'll take, start from an open source uh, language model and we'll continuously pre-train that on next token prediction on text corpora. In order to run this step, you probably need at least 100 million tokens. We've found it to work well with about a billion, to 5 billion, or 10 billion tokens. You run continuous pre-training on AWS training infrastructure. You can run this on uh, batch GPUs, and you can also run it on a multi-node Tranium cluster. And that will run your trade pre-training pretty fast and give you a domain-adapted pre-training generator. Uh, after that step, you take the model and you run it through an alignment step. The alignment step takes QA pairs that it allows you to tune the way that your model is responding. From that step, you can then take it and use a retrieval augmented generation layer to provide documents as context to your model. Uh, these are documents are the form of text chunks, and then as you saw in the inference, those text chunks are being fed into the generator at inference time. Now, after this, you get a deployment endpoint where you can have uh, an API to make that request and integrate it into your downstream applications. And the best part about this whole thing is this is all the all these APIs are seamless, so you can pass through this process and retrain your model as your business data evolves and as your use case uh, evolves and your stakeholders want new things out of your model. Um, so this is a very different approach uh, than hitting a general language model. Uh, this is a fully deeply adapted system that you're training here, and then you can build you know proprietary. Uh, you know, defense around the system that you're building and you can build uh, proprietary IP behind the model that you're training your SLM system from. So now let's go ahead and dive in a little bit more into the training. And now let's go into that platform that I showed you. So this platform is running in my AWS sandbox, as I mentioned, none of the data is leaving and I'm uploading some corpora here. Here I have a uh, doctor's notes. So I'm uploading uh, an S3 bucket here of doctor's notes. You can see I'm about 66% complete, uh, and I've collected uh, over 550 million tokens from this. So this process takes an S3 URL, iterates through your buckets, parses the text, and then it tokenizes the text. That text is then tokenized, and it's packed. So it's packed with stacks of tokens to prepare your data set for pre-training. So let's go ahead and add a new corpus and kick off uh, a new one of these. Uh, so we'll say here, demo corpus, and I will upload uh, for this one, let's uh, let's upload the small doctor doctor's notes. That'll be a nice little small subset for for tokens for us to collect. And you can see that kicks off a process. This fans out across ECS CPUs, uh, so it processes uh, your data quite quickly. Um, now let's go ahead and jump into pre-training. 
So you can see here uh, that I have a doctor's note CPT that I've already uh, trained here. This was on those doctor notes that you, you saw there. Um, but you can go ahead and kick off a new pre-training. Uh, we'll call this one doctor's notes demo. And you can pre pre create a pre-training here, choose a corpus, and then fire off the GPUs in the back, back end. So here we're starting a pre-training. Uh, you can see it's going through the API route to make that request, and we'll see uh, the results of our pre-training here soon. There you go. Uh, you're connected to a pre-training uh, GPU provider, and you're running pre-training. Uh, this, of course, all of these things are available via API, so you could have uploaded uh, the S3 bucket from the API. This is all predicted by an API key. And uh, one thing to note here is I have chosen to make a public exposure of this platform. So this is running on rcjacob.rc.ai. You don't have to do that. You can keep this completely networked with inside your VPC so the data is never leaving. Uh, now let's go to the next step. So let's say now I want to add a retrieval layer onto my model. In order to do so, I would upload documents. Um, you can see here that I've already uploaded PubMed documents uh, with the intention to have the doctors uh, from the doctor's notes uh, reading uh, these PubMed documents and making inferences based on, on the PubMed documents in the similar way that we saw the patents working. Of course, in your case, this will be your own internal data. Uh, one thing to note, the uh, document corpora that you upload into the RC platform for retrieval should be quite a bit smaller than the larger pre-training corpus that you're using. This is uh, so you can kind of phone into different uh, domains within your proprietary text uh, to be uploading into the system. Uh, and then retrievers, uh, similarly, uh, we can create a new retriever. This one, we can call it PubMed Retriever. Uh, we'll go ahead and kick off from the domain pre-trained patent. Uh, actually, no, let's do this from the PubMed checkpoint. That would be better. And we'll go ahead and choose our context and we'll start training here. One thing that's of note here in our retriever training is uh, that we're actually training the retriever and the generation model jointly. This gives a much better signal back to the retriever. Uh, so it's able to uh, learn from that general uh, corpora knowledge that's already been put into the pre-trained generator. So that really uh, deepens and contextualizes the retriever and uh, you can see afterwards you get an eval hit rate. This eval hit rate is a good evaluation metric for you to check against your stock retrievers like an OpenAI Atta or uh, a Cohere uh, retriever, which is going to be general and is going to, in many cases, uh, perform 30 to 40 percent not as well as a domain adapted retriever. Uh, now for the next step. Um, so we're training our retriever, we're training our pre-training. Let's go ahead and kick off uh, um, an alignment. So in alignment here, uh, here's a little dummy data set that I uploaded, it's just Laura Mimsub. But this is the QA pairs that you really want your model to learn from. So you can use a stock alignment data set like the Hugging Face alignment data set if you don't have your QA pairs. Um, or you can simply try to uh, you know, use RAG with a DPT generator that's been merged into a general model. These are all options that you have uh, as you're progressing through the RC platform. But in this case, uh, let's say I just have a lorem ipsum and I kind of want to uh, steer in this direction, then I can go ahead and start an alignment. Uh, so I'll create an alignment here. Um, the alignment takes a couple of inputs. So let's call this uh, lorem ipsum 2. And you take a pre-training. So I'll start from the doctor's note CPT. So I start from the doctor's note CPT and I add my QA set here, lorem ipsum, and I'll start create the alignment and I'll go ahead and start the alignment. So in a similar fashion, this fires off GPUs that are running in the back end of your AWS environment for your alignment. And there we have it, that started. And you can, this one runs quite a bit faster than pre-training. So it's only, you know, 10 to 30 minutes uh, to realign your model. So you can really iterate quickly on this step. And at each of these steps, you know, that's something to think about as you're going through and training your SLM you do them with different frequency. So pre-training, you probably want to run that every quarter or six months or so as you amass more text corpora within inside your organization. Now, aligning and RAG, you can retrain those faster. The GPUs are less expensive uh, and you can, you can retrain those things faster. And, uh, and then um, one other thing to note here, as far as inference goes, when you deploy the inference endpoint, you're, you're inferring on a much smaller model. So this model is much more cost effective than if you're going to be inferring on uh, you know, two, four, eight trillion, however many trillion parameters are, are running behind general models. And that's good for, you know, the environment. It's good for uh, the, um, it's good for 
you know, to fight against global warming. And it's good to, you know, do things like that, but it's also good for your cloud bill. And that's the biggest thing that we're concerned here at RC is uh, not only keeping these models uh, slim and efficient and, uh, you know, working well for your use case, um, but, but also accurate. So they're deeply uh, trained in domain context. And after you get this model endpoint, you can do evaluations like LLM as a judge uh, versus other systems that you might be using, or you can simply uh, do kind of more of a human eval where you're inferring and deciding uh, what's working better. And so, of course, there's some cases uh, that work better here than others. The ones that are going to work well is where you have a large set of proprietary text tokens that you want to ingest in the model and you're building a proprietary SLM within your systems. And I hope you liked this video tutorial and we'll see you soon.